Hello friends, welcome to ASP Preparation videos, myself Omar Mehmood and today I am going to discuss the 17th chapter of Safety Professional Reference and Study Guide by David Yates. This chapter is related to trainings. So before moving forward, I want to discuss the definition of training, what does it mean? So training is something to deliver a knowledge on a particular scale with a specified group of people and these specified group of people can be laymen or workers, they can be your peers or even they can be management staff. So as you know, all these people which I have mentioned are the adults and adults have some specific needs. Adult learning is totally different as compared to conduct a session with a group of teenagers. So this chapter will cover the topics including principle of adult learning, delivery methods, training need analysis, training program development and media presentation. Okay, so I'm going to discuss all these topics one by one. So first of all, principle of adult learning. There are six main characteristics of adult learners. First of all, they are autonomous and self-directed. So it's mean that during a training session, you must involve them, you must engage them in the training and you play a role of facilitator. And secondly, they have foundation of life experience and knowledge. So it's mean that they already have some kind of experience related to different sectors. Maybe some come from oil and gas sector, some from textile sector, some from fertilizer or power sector. So you must acknowledge their knowledge and experience and you ask them to share their experience during a training session. And thirdly, they are goal oriented. So it's mean that your training and your content must be some kind of direction and it has some clear objectives and goals which you will uh, deliver during a training session and your whole training will revolve around that goals. And the fourth one is they are relevancy oriented. So it's mean that during a training session, you must explain how the training objectives relate to the training activities. And then they are practical in nature. So it's mean that the trainer should demonstrate the relevance of training to the actual job. So, so that they can implement the outcomes of that training in actual work scenario. And then need to be shown respect. Obviously, as a trainer, you should acknowledge the wealth of knowledge and experience the participants bring to the training session. And also treat all participants in the training as equal rather than subordinates. So these are some characteristics which you need to consider while conduct a training session with adult learners. Okay, so I have already discussed the main characteristics and considerations while conducting our training session with adult learners. So I am skipping this part and move to the next topic that is safety training program. So as a safety practitioner, you have encountered to develop a safety training program. And to do this, you must conduct a training need analysis. And based on that training need analysis, you will design your safety training program that will be more effective and convenient to share relevant information and knowledge to specified group of people. So to structure a formal training program, the following steps must be implemented. And these are five steps you must undertake. First of all, performance analysis, then instructional design, then material acquisition and development, and then delivery of training, and lastly, course evaluation. So I'm going to discuss all these parameters one by one. First of all, performance analysis. So it's the first step to consider while designing any safety program. Because first of all, you must evaluate if the training is the right solution to the actual workplace problem. It's very important. And if you have evaluated it's the last option, then I extensive research into what specific job skill or knowledge is needed and which are the targeted group of people. Okay. And then instructional design. Instructional design means on the basis of your need analysis, you will determine which type of method you will use to deliver a training session and which type of material you will consider while designing a training module. And then material acquisition or development. So the instructor will purchase or develop a training material according to training need analysis and according to the objectives of training session. As you know, one size does not fit all. So it means that you cannot develop a training module for both management and workers at the same time. You must consider their specific needs and the knowledge which they have already and accordingly you will develop a training module and material for that particular training session.
moving forward and discuss delivery of training so as you know training can be delivered via a several ways it can be a classroom based session it can be audio visual it can be a group discussion or it can be a practical demonstration so we will discuss the method of delivery in detail after covering this topic so course evaluation so what does it mean once the training has been delivered the course evaluation should be conducted and the purpose of course evaluation is to obtain feedback and refine your training module and content so it's very important and it's also be valuable to evaluate the competency of participants after training session okay so now i am going to discuss the delivery of method sorry wait a minute okay okay so here we are delivery methods so there are three major type of delivery method which can be used to deliver the trainings and what are these these are instructor led trainings self paced training and structured on job training before discussing the training method i want to elaborate the retention rate based on delivery method so the normal person can retain 5% information if he hears a lecture and if he reads then he can retain the 10% information and if we use the audio visual he will read the information and hear the information then he can retain the 20% of information and then the practical demonstration if we do what we are talking about then the person can retain the 30% information and then the group discussion so in this way he need to brainstorm he need to rethink and he need to uh, you know describe his ideas and information and experience to other people so in this way he can learn and retain the 50% information and then practice by doing and if he do what he learned then he can retain the 75% information teaching others the method which is very useful and i am using this because i want to retain the 90% of information so this is the best way to retain the information as maximum okay so we are discussing the three major type of delivery methods first one is instructor led training so it's a traditional method to share information with participants like a teacher did in a classroom when we are attending a school so it's type of lecture but we are living in modern society and we have internet and computers so we can conduct a training session or share information via internet and broadcast throughout the world like i am doing okay the second delivery method is self paced learning in self paced learning the students typically learns at their own pace by using training materials such as workbooks or textbooks and a newer version of self paced learning methodology is the inclusion of computer based modules so there are two types of computer based modules which we have in the market or the internet so the first one is we can access the evaluation test without attending the training module but it's not effective when we are talking about the safety training sessions but now the second one is more effective and that is you must go through all the training content and then you can able to access the test it's more reliable option okay now we are going to discuss structured on the job training so what is it so it is a training delivery method which is usually used by the work supervisors so you can say that it's task based training for example if a welding supervisor conduct a training session with welders and demonstrate how to conduct a particular type of welding on a pipeline then it will be considered as structured on the job training or task based training and it has clear objectives and goals to establish prior to the training okay moving forward and discuss training need analysis as i mentioned earlier training need analysis is very important tool while designing the safety training program and it will eventually elaborates the level of workers performance versus the desired performance level 
and we will evaluate these by doing the observing performance of workers interviewing employees reviewing quality score and completing employees questionnaire okay so type of need analysis need analysis can be conducted using several methods some of the major type of need analysis are listed as follows so first one is context analysis then user analysis work analysis content analysis training suitability analysis and cost benefit analysis i will describe these very briefly so first of all the context analysis it's very uh, very important because as you know whenever we propose a training for a specific group of people then the organization or management can ask us a question is it really needs is it really important so we must do the context analysis in this regard and determine is it really need to conduct a training session is it the actual solution of any particular problem so context analysis is to determine the desired training needed by the organization okay and then the user analysis so what is the user analysis user analysis mean we have different kind of people with different expertise and levels and we will use this analysis to determine the competency of workers and accordingly we will design our safety programs and added the different training uh, sessions in that particular program and then the work analysis work analysis focuses on the desired skill and performance requirement of the job being performed so it can also be referred as task or job analysis okay and now the content analysis so content analysis is something to evaluate the authenticity of different documents and update them according to requirement so a thorough analysis of the document used in the job is conducted so this analysis may include a review of laws or written procedures that are directly related to task or job and an example of this type of document that may be reviewed is confined space entry requirement or uh, it can be sop for chemical handling and management or storage something like that okay and then training suitability analysis a thorough analysis of the task job or project is performed to determine if training is the desired or only solution to performance problems so this is the suitability analysis okay and then the cost benefit analysis cost benefit analysis is very important to convince the management on particular investment on training so cost benefit analysis are conducted to determine the return on investment to the company from the original investment of training cost so it's very important to convince the management to you know uh, hire an external trainer or conduct an in-house training session with some kind of tools or equipments for practical demonstration and it will definitely some cost so it's very beneficial to convince the management okay and then techniques as mentioned above there are several techniques that can be used to conduct a training need analysis a few of them are listed as follows direct observation then the questionnaire then the consultation with employees having knowledge of the task review of the document and relevant literature interviews focus group test record and reports quality assurance quality control reports representative samples of behavior so these all are some techniques which we can use to you know uh, refine our training need analysis moving forward and discuss training program development so once you have done the training need analysis and you have decided that the training is the last and only option to consider then you will develop a training program and while developing the training program you will consider uh, a systematic approach which includes some steps or phases and what are these firstly these are five different steps you will consider while designing the training program firstly a written performance objective you have clear goals and objectives and then content outline selecting the tra training delivery method selecting material to be used in the training and testing and evaluation so these are the phases and steps uh, which will be discussed in details here so firstly the written performance objective so there are four elements to consider when developing the objectives which are target audience who will receive the training are they your peers or workers or management so you will see the target audience and then the behavior what observable action will the employee exhibit during the evaluation and then the condition under what circumstances will the desired action be performed what material and equipment will be used so 
you will you will oversee the condition of that particular training session is it a classroom based training session or you will have to go to the work site and have some practical demonstration so you will see you will consider all these uh, things accordingly and then degree standard how well must a task be accomplished what score must be achieved so it means that you will decide it the outcomes and objectives of that particular training session and you will arrange the program according to that objectives okay and second thing developing course outline it's also very important because whenever you are decided to conduct a training session with management staff then definitely you will consider the course outline according to their competency according to their knowledge and according to their certain uh, expectation and when you have uh, decided to conduct a session with workers then you will uh, rearrange the course according to their particular needs so what are the general course description firstly what is it is in covered in the course teaching approach is it lecture decision ba uh, discussion base hands on etc and what are the prerequisites other courses advanced job skill etc as you know before conducting a training session you will evaluate the competency of uh, participants for example if you are going to conduct a session on advanced excel then obviously the participant must know the basic uh, excel skills and then goals and objectives list the goals and objectives of successfully completing the course outline of course structure how the course will be broken down modules and hand on etc time required to complete that training course requirements and evaluation criteria okay and the third part and phase of the training program is selecting of training delivery method it's also very important because uh, whenever you decided to conduct a training session then you will see what's the outcome and objectives you want to uh, get so accordingly you will decide the training delivery method okay and the fourth thing is development of course material it's also very important material used in the course of instruction should be selected with a specific purposes in mind the learning retention of most adult is uh, have been discussed earlier so you will decide the development of course material according to you know uh, your set objectives testing and evaluation when evaluating the success or failure of a training program trainers usually perform appraisals of their students so this section focuses on the testing and evaluation of the student in a course not on the evaluation of the overall safety program so it's very important so basically it has three parts or you can say uh, we can evaluate the participants or students in three different phases so first one is pre-test pre-test is something to determine the existing competency of uh, participants review test review tests are fall between the pre-test and post tests so for example if you are going to conduct a 40 hour training session and you want to see how the students absorb the information then you will evaluate them at the end of each day so it will be very helpful to determine either your training delivery method is good or not and then the post test post test is the test which have been conducted at the end of training session so post test should be designed to determine if the participants can perform the learning objects often the post test contain the same information presented in the pre-test and review test so it's the final test so it's very important so that's all and now we are going to discuss media presentation so as we discussed earlier there are several different delivery methods which can be used during a training session so in past slide transparencies were being used to conduct a training session and what is it it's actually a flexible transparent sheet and the trainer will add data on that sheet and it will put inside the projector and it will eventually zoom in and all the participants can see it so it's the old technology and nowadays as you know we can use the projector and uh, represent and share the data as we want powerpoint presentation it's very common and useful tool to present the data in front of audience so using the projector and powerpoint slides so it's very common and you know that already but there are some requirements regarding the distance and thickness and height of the PowerPoint fonts. So if the participants sit 25 feet away from the screen, then you will use one inch letter height and one over eight inch letter thickness. And if the participant sits uh, 50 feet away, 75 feet away or 100 feet away, then you will use the font letter height and thickness according to this. Okay, so you can use different type of uh, fonts which are available in Microsoft PowerPoint uh, to, you know, to make your presentation more effective chart and graph you can use different type of charts and graph in the powerpoint presentations and as you know chart is the visual representation of data in which the data are presented by symbols such as bar chart line chart and pie chart etc and you can also use 
uh, tabular numeric data and functions or some kind of qualitative structures a graph may refer to you know graphic such as chart or diagram depicting the relationship between two or more variables used for instance in visualizing scientific data so charts and graphs are very important and useful representation of complex data so you can use that so that's all it's the 17th chapter of safety professional reference and study guide by david Sears. so if you are planning to sit in asp examination in coming month then this video will be helpful for you and i try to elaborate every topic in this chapter precisely and in an understandable way so if you like the video please subscribe and share with your friends uh, who are aspiring to be a asp certified professional and uh, lastly i would say if you subscribe the channel like it share it comment then it will mo motivate me to develop and share the same kind of videos in future so thank you so much